Okay, Alistair, uh, the previous part we were dealing with your initial yeah. uh, downloads. Yeah. So um, you've drawn a number of drawings and had a large number of experiences of different types of beings, is that correct? I have, yes. So can we uh, start discussing that? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, the, next, the following year, in the beginning of it, uh, around January time, I was uh, walking around in Shepherd's Bush area, which is a quite a populated area, but I decided to take a scenic route around to get to my flat where I lived. And I walked up through White City and I ended up in the scrubs, Wormwood Scrubs, which is a park next to a prison. And I have a drawing here of this UFO, which is a triangle shaped UFO. I call it the hovering triangle shaped UFO. The balls each have a bright glowing light. Okay. Uh, it doesn't make uh, much sound, if any at all, and it hovers and it, it, it was moving backwards and forwards above me. Uh, now, what time of day is this? Around 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Yeah. What was the weather like? What was Cold. Cold, yeah. cloudy, or? So it, it was slightly raining, just a tiny bit of rain. So there's essentially, it wasn't, you weren't confusing it with stars or things like that? It was very low down. So stars, uh, you can see that they're very high up and they're small. This thing was big. I could clearly see it, uh, and it was... You and know, you was, could see a defined shape. It wasn't as if you were just joining three dots. No, there, I, there, I, there, it didn't just have... Uh, it wasn't just three lights in the shape of a triangle. It was three lights connected to each other with uh, some form of material. Now, I mean, if you were to hold your thumb at arm's length, what size... If, could you be able to obscure the object with your thumb, or would, would the object be bigger than your thumb? I would still be able to see some of the objects. I'd probably be able to cover uh, half of the object. So, I mean, this thumb. would be much bigger than the moon or the sun then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was very clear. You know, it wasn't like far away and a little dot or anything like that. It was close and bright and I could see, you know, the connections between the, the lights. So there's three lights in a triangle shape and they're all connected as part of the the ship or the spacecraft. I wouldn't say it was a spaceship, I'd say it was a, a spacecraft, like a small, uh, a small, a, akin to what we would have. We, in our, uh, you know, aerospace, we have jets. I'd say it was, it was like a jet. Yeah. So in, why does, how was it flying? What did it do? It was hovering and it was hovering backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Uh, however, I didn't see it straight away. What happened first is I was standing in the grass and I got punched by by a being which I couldn't that, that I couldn't see because they, they, they wasn't directly there so I would look around me 360 degrees and I'd just been punched in the back of the head and I couldn't see anyone that had just punched me and then I it materialized the being which I believe punched me and it made a sound that was like oof like that it was like a oof sound and then it and it looked at me and then it punched me again in the in the front of the face from from far away. It hit you with it, that like its arm. It yeah, fist, it, it wasn't a weapon or something. Fist. Yeah. Uh, it could have been a weapon, but but it, it was its body. You know, it, it could have been part of the weapon. Could have been part of its body, but it was. It felt like a punch, and it looked. You know, the, the it had an arm, and it moved its arm forward. Um, but I was far away. So so what I what I believe is that the the being was able to punch through space. Uh, you know, so for instance, I, I could be far away, but it could still hit me uh, somehow through, through space. A bit like, I mean, I've spoken to a military, uh, someone high up in the military who's been asking me about this stuff. And, I, and, I, and he said, if you, had to, if you had to name what it was that it was doing, you know, succinctly, what would you say it was doing? And I say wormhole punches. Right. So that's the ability to just punch uh, someone, even if they're far away or even if they're on the other side of a wall. So you mentioned the military there. Have you, have you been interrogated by the military yeah. about, about, have, uh, about these experiences? I have, yeah. and, and what did that involve? Well, one of them usually comes over from the US and meets me, you know, in, in London and takes me for a meal and we have a very, very long discussion. I've also been asked to write uh, my experiences down and send them in the post rather than email. I've been told not to email them, I have to send them in the post, either on a disk, as documents on a disk, or just physical documents. 
And you don't have to put any silver paper in it or carbon paper in the in the in the letter. No. Yeah, maybe you should do that anyway <laughs> because they can still read letters and things. Yeah. Uh, no, they they do, they say that there's a chance that the the information will get read by other people, but they they're not too worried about that. But they said just you know, uh, yeah. p post not not email. How did the military get involved? Asking you questions about your experiences. What what led to that? Uh, that's been quite a long time. I mean, I, I was in I was connected to the military before this actually happened to me. I was working in a facility which would be the alternative to staying in a hotel. So people would stay in this facility rather than a hotel because they would get to, to do activities on a day to day basis all arranged for them. And it would be it's more like a flat rather than a than a hotel. So I mean this is even before your your event in, in Earl's Court where the yeah. um your initial thing with the, the, the this is before the download uh, the download. event and vi and the vivet character and the the warped head shaped being which appeared so after could you explain those those like it could be to turn the clock back and explain really sure. where it all started yeah i started that job when i was 19 um what job is this basically you work in a in a facility which is an alternative to staying in a hotel so they they, they was that alternative to staying in a hotel at earl's court no, it, 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 it's uh, staying in um, central London. It was, a, it was a, above a casino. An accommodation block. I mean, a, a, yeah, a, exactly. A, I mean, it was, in other words, it was a, was it was a paid for... Yeah, they, they pay the same amount that they would pay if they were staying in an expensive hotel and they get taken to different parts of London every day by a different person and they get also got taken to dance classes and you know self-development uh, workshops and things as well and what is there a, is there a name to this it's or? called immersion training immersion training yeah. and uh, you applied for this job or were you selected for this job uh, i was hired by a, a family member who'd started it up he'd had the idea right are you able to talk about that not really not, not too really. much uh well can you tell us what you can say about that uh, but in order to build the background as to what very high, uh, very elite clients, uh, billionaires, military people, doctors, you know, surgeons, very high, very elite uh, client list. And for what purposes? Protection or, or dealing with ETs or? It isn't specifically related to, to these things. It is a little bit fringe, but it, it, it it's actually uh, purely self development. So they, they they pay for the the week of of residential. Uh, you know, uh, experience. So, are you exposed to uh, different cultural things like dancing? You know, so you know how to dance properly, or you know how to eat properly. And yeah. Was, you, you know, you N nutrition, fitness, dance. Keep, keep your elbows off the table. I eat the right food. Yeah. Self development. Uh, you know. It's sort of officer training. Yeah. Basically, one of the clients uh, I was I was uh, managing this uh, experience for these people. Um, and I was living in the in the place. I was living in the facility. Uh, there was there was more than one. There was two. Uh, sometimes there's there's been three. And uh, a very someone very high up in the U.S. military came to stay. Um, and I was talking to him, you know, because I would talk to the clients of an evening when they get back in uh, from their day's activities. And he he started talking about the television program Lost. And it had you know it was in I think it was in maybe it's. Uh, First season. Yeah, first season. Yeah, then, first yeah. season. And um, he was wondering, like, because it was so mysterious, you know, like, what's actually going on. And he asked me some of my, my opinions. And I gave my theories, and my theories were quite, quite, quite advanced. Um, and he found me interesting. But we didn't talk about ETs or, or anything like that. Um, but then we, 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 we kept contact by email. Um, and then when I had my experience, I, I, I was talking to him and I, and I said to him, I had an experience and he asked, he asked me, uh, what it was, uh, pertaining to. And I said, oh, well, it was, uh, it, it could have been ET, you know, it could have been extraterrestrial. And as soon as I said that, and cause he knew me before and he knew that I was very compass mentis and very rational, he, he knew that I probably wasn't lying. Um, but what relation has this got to do with the series Lost? Are you saying that there are certain things in the series Lost which yeah. are designed to, uh, shall we say, stimulate people in the, in the population group to... Basically, my opinions on what was happening in the program were quite advanced. Like, I gave good theories because uh, it's, it's, it's very, 
supernatural you know the, the I mean for somebody who hasn't seen Lost could you give it a quick, quick synopsis of, of what the program Lost is uh, there's a an airplane crash uh, above the ocean and the, the plane spits in half and half the plane ends up on one half of a lost island and the other half ends up on the, on the other half of the lost island and the people begin living on the island because they can't uh, get a rescue mission because they don't have transmissions and their mobiles aren't working and they find all kinds of paranormal things happening on the island. So, so it just builds up more and more, more and more paranormal activity happening on this island that the, 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 the passengers of the passenger jet have ended up on. Apart from the fact that when a jet falls apart, it's unlikely a lot of people survive uh, in real life. Some, well, quite a few people survived in the, in the, tele in the program. Uh, partly, you know, it's partly believed that it's like a, a miraculous island where miracles happen. So that, that's part of the explanation of how they've ended up surviving the crash in the first place. They're not actually, sh at some points, they're not actually sure if they're still alive anyway. They're not sure if they're in some sort of afterlife um, because the island is just so strange that, and, they have a, and they've had no contact with the real world. So they're, they're not even, one of them even jokes that he's not sure what time period it is. Like they're not even sure if they've gone back in time, you know. And so you're... Your potential answers or solutions to what happened in Lost was a key factor in that military guy making fr making friends with me. Yeah. So, do you feel that he 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 searched you out to start with, or it was just a happenstance? I think it was just happenstance. You know? And are you able to reveal uh, what agency or le alphabet agency or department was he working for? Uh, biometrics. And was that in the UK or US? US. Um. The way you said biometrics implied t t to me that maybe it implied uh, involving other other beings. It it probably does, you know, because at the end of the day they're working with uh, mapping and you know they're working with identity and mapping identity uh, using biometrics, which is like way more advanced than just a fingerprint, you know. So obviously, I th I think that they are connected with with ETs and they're tracking ETs in the population. Probably. Now, how do you feel about that? Uh, it unsettles me. Why does it unsettle you? Because in the mainstream media, they don't really talk enough about ETs. They don't give enough education yeah. Yeah. On, on ETs. There isn't enough information there. Is there anything you could say now which would be able to uh, contribute to educating people about ETs? There's a lot I could say about, about well, why it. Why don't you say it? Well, you need to understand there is, uh, you know, the distinctions between ET, uh, EDE, so, you know, extra dimensional entity, yeah. extraterrestrial. So like terrestrial, the word terrestrial comes from uh, terrestri or, or terra, uh, which basically, basically means earth, you know, yeah. and not, not earth as in this planet, earth as, in earth as in earth. So what, you know, extraterrestrial basically means, um, another planet. Extra dimensional means another dimension or interdimensional. Expl you know. can, you, can, you, can you explain that? Yeah, uh, different, basically for, if you think about time, uh, you, you, you travel through time but there's, you know, you, you sort of leave a, a snake behind you through time. You know, your body is in different positions and everything and all of those positions exist in the past and, and you, you travel from the past through the you know the present into the future and so so basically if you if you think of it as slices you know there's there's uh there's you now there's you a few moments from now and if you think of them all as slices that are next to each other so when you're in one of them you can't see the other one right. but but it is there because you know it was there because you because you were there so it's next to you so if you imagine that there are things that are next to you which you can't see but they are there so we're in one dimension there could be a, a dimension right next to us but we can't see it but it is there just like the dimension of me talking a few moments ago is is there sort of behind me in my timeline you know so think of time first to understand how it how there can be um, another dimension and then think of other dimensions as well like spatial dimensions different frequency ranges you know, so now, what do you mean by different frequencies? Do you, you mean a different state of matter or different? Yeah, different state of, of matter. An actual 
you know, they could, you know, uh, actual frequency ranges. So, for instance, our eyes only see a specific range of, of light, light waves. Um, and our ears, dogs hear more than we do. Dogs can hear higher, higher pitches and uh, certain insects can see different details. So, for instance, a spider web to a fly has a bit more color to it. If that you know, if if, you, if that makes sense, because the fly uh, picks up on its it, the way it reflects uh, the the sunlight, or, or any, you know, and it's in the interest of the fly not to fly into that, so it's going to give a lot more they, perception to it. Uh, the, I think I think actually what happens is the fly gets attracted to to it, it, the, the 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 web to a fly looks more attractive than it than it does to us because it, the the fly sees all of these lights and and things. You know, and then it thinks how how interesting it is, and then and it, it gets flies caught. into it. Yeah. So if if you know we don't see every frequency range of light, we don't hear every frequency range of sound. So just on that level, there there are worlds around us which are there, but we just we don't perceive them. And you know, if you, if you want to take it a level further, our senses, you know, we're on a specific vibrational pitch. You know, like my my hand touches my hand. Because they're, you know, they're, they're in alignment, they're on a, the same uh, pitch of density, of, of matter. And uh, if, if, if I went to a higher frequency range, if I was more like photons rather than uh, cells, you know, I would, I would uh, have a much uh, thinner density. And if I went even higher, let's say I went to the level of like a gamma ray, I'd pass through a wall. You know, so it, uh, there could be, you know, potentially a level where you, you pass between universes if, you, if you're on a specific frequency range. And that's how I believe the, 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 the UFOs that are able to, to get from one planet to the next or one dimension to the next, I think that they, they go into a different uh, density of matter. So they've, they've, you know... So essentially extraterrestrial means that you're, you're staying in the same uh, frequency range of existence. Yeah. Whereas extra-dimensional means you're shifting frequency. Shifting frequency. So basically one is shifting distance across space-time. Well, what might they, the, the extraterrestrials might be using in, uh, extra-dimensional technology to travel the distances, but they are still extraterrestrial. So they're on one planet in another galaxy, and they have the technology to turn their spaceship onto a different frequency, a frequency range similar to light, like photons, and then the amount of propulsion required to make the ship move would be much less because it's much lighter. So they, they, they would have less propulsion requirements and they would have more uh, speed. They would, they would be able to, potentially, if, if they can go to a high enough frequency, they would be able to, to possibly just travel from one galaxy to the next in a matter of minutes because they might be able to go faster than the speed of light. If they can go to a frequency range higher than the frequency range of light, so if they're even thinner, you know, the density. Yeah. Exactly. As some people say, um, the speed of light is a constant, it's not a limit. Not a limit, no. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a limit because they're, you know... So, okay, we're, we're, we're sort of speculating at the moment. Can we get back to uh, the guy that you talked to in the military and what involvement did that have? Uh, what happened with him? How did that relationship develop? Well, we spoke in emails. He, he would come to visit uh, London. Uh, he stayed yeah, But the these visit. private emails in the sense that they came from uh, his private email address or yeah. did they come from an agency? They come from his private email address. So he, he always kept the agency side out? He did, yeah. Uh, was there any uh, feeling that he was essentially operating um, from his own personal interest point no, of view? No, he was, he, was, uh, sh he was showing my work to the military. Now, what was your work and what were you showing? He was asking me how we would defend against extraterrestrials. Uh, Why would we need to defend against extraterrestrials? Because they might be hostile. How do we defend against extraterrestrials? Well, I, I was saying uh, to work with uh, basically bacteria, you know, so, so I, I was saying to investigate uh, the types of uh, bacteria that we have on the planet, especially underground, 
because if they are biological and they don't have uh, the, the years and years of evolutionary immunity that we have, uh, to investigate basically why biological un- means of, of uh, defending. I why guess. underground? Because uh, on the, one of the earlier uh, basis series, uh, David Griffin and, and uh, some uh, researchers have discovered is goo, a nano thing now. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with, with this. So could you tell us all about that, please? Well, some people believe that, I'm, uh, that I have been modified by this goo that you talk about. Um, I'm not sure. I just, you know, so, uh, there's a few people that have... Now, who, who says that? Why and what? Tell us the whole thing. Okay, the reason why uh, one of them says it is because under normal lighting conditions, like in a, in a uh, like the lights in the house, like from light bulbs and things, I'm, you know, from certain angles, I, I've got a bit of redness. Like I'm, I'm a tiny bit red. Yeah. Uh, now we're we now we've got red lights on. So it doesn't. Yeah. It, it's. Do you think d- d- could we modify the lighting here now to to see that? Uh, yeah. If you'd like to. Now, how, how would that best be done? Just turn off the red the red light, and uh, we'll have the normal white. Okay. Ones. Well, we're going to turn the lights off here. Uh, we're going to just do this. Light, as long as it doesn't mimic sunlight. Provided it doesn't mimic sunlight. Yeah. Because in sunlight, I reflect the light, and I'm white. Whereas in normal light, I'm slightly red. Basically, my skin tone in this kind of lighting, like artificial lighting, it, it's got a, a slight redness, so a little bit of red to it. But in direct sunlight outside, my skin is like white. Rather, there's no red, it's, it's white, you know, and it reflects the light. Uh, so that means that my skin is reacting differently to... to uh, sunlight and uh, artificial light, and it wasn't always like that. So, for instance, well, it, okay, um, we've got the door outside. Sure. We're going to simply uh, open the door. Okay. And if you're able to walk this way, and we'll we'll uh, just bring bring your microphone with you. This this all. Okay. Now, what you're saying is that now in sunlight, you're. I reflect the light. I'm very white. Whereas in normal light, I'm a bit red. So there's a big difference between red and white. Now, what's the, 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 normally under television, there are people with certain skin, skin types and the sunlight or the um, light can be very strong and can actually illuminate the surface underneath the skin. Yeah, but the thing is, I wasn't like this before. Uh, some, something happened when I was 19 involving sewage and that's when this happened. So. I used to have like uh, a normal skin tone in, in the same skin tone in front of sunlight as I had in artificial light. And then something happened where I became extremely white in sunlight and slightly red in uh, normal light. And you're talking about this black goo. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, a very, uh, it was a traumatizing experience for me. I became unwell from be, being exposed to sewage in a well under the ground. Where was the well? Uh, it was in a Gloucester Road. It was near Gloucester Road. It's a dis- it's a disused well, uh, and it has a it has a an underground uh, sewage uh, thing, and it it came up out of the ground. What do you mean it came up? And I was I was living in a room that was built into the well, and I was breathing in the the gas from the sewage for a, a, a couple of months. Um, what do you mean a room built into the into the well? Sorry. What do you mean by a room built into the well? I was living in a basement flat. Yeah. And the room that I was staying in was was built into the well with a door that leads into the well, so you could go out into the well and walk around. Um, and I breathed in I breathed in the the, the gas from the sewage. Um, and since that time, that's when my skin has become so illuminated. Okay, apart from just getting maybe ill or unwell from sewage, why would the military be any interested in that? Uh, because the owner of the, the well was a, is, a, is also a military engineer. Very, very high up level military engineer. So what is wrong with the well? Uh, they, they fixed it, but uh, there was a sewage leak coming from under the ground. so. Sewage came up out of the ground, but it was very dark. Um, and when I told my friend about this uh, sewage, he said that sounds like 
a substance that's under the ground that he's heard of which can modify your body. Okay, well, what we'll do is... Genetically. We'll uh, go back inside and uh, take, it f take it from there. Well, thank you very much. Uh, impromptu change and everything else. Okay. Um, as you can see in this light, uh, artificial light, my skin is quite, quite normal. It's, a, you know, it's got a bit of, it's a bit red. Uh, however, outside in direct sunlight, my skin reflects the light and is very white. It's, it's actually incredibly white. You know, I, I look like a bright white person standing there, you know, and, and people have commented on this. A lot of, a lot of people have, who've clapped eyes on me when I'm standing in, in direct sunlight, um, have said, hang on, you know, you're, you're bright white. You know. Now the important thing about this is this is different to when you were before you went before into that, nineteen before that well incident. Yeah, I was. So what exactly is that whole thing about? Okay, I was living in a basement flat, and the room that I was staying in was uh, built into an underground well, and there was a door to the well, so you could go out and you could walk around in the well. And what size of well is this? That you Quite large, a large one. And it's not like a small one with a bucket. It's like a very big, big one. Now, yeah. did it lead anywhere? I mean, yeah, there's, there, there's, some, there's some underground pathways and they, they lead to underground rivers and things under, underneath London. Can you explain and explore any more about that? Yeah, if you, you know, if you, if you go through a specific uh, door uh, and you go through, you end up in a, a room. If you go through a hole in the, in the wall in that room, you end up under the ground, um, and you can you can you can walk around sort of in the sewers. Now, what do you mean, sort of in the sewers? Uh, well, there's it, 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 only so far you can go, but you're in, you're in the sewage system, um, and you know there are there are there. Are, if you if you were to drill ho more holes in more walls, you'd end up in uh, one of the the underground rivers because uh, the, there's there's flow there's water flowing behind the walls. Now, what on earth would somebody have an apartment, or why were you placed in an apartment? We, we were just renting uh, an apartment from a military engineer. You were renting a, a, an apartment from a military engineer. Yeah. How did that happen? It just happened. It just was a coincidence. We, we were renting the apartment, and it, it just happened to be that the landlord was a military engineer. You know. uh, and he happened to give you this thing which links you into the underground sewage system of London? Yeah. And this just happens to have a gas which comes from it, which converts. Well, what happened is uh, fluid, like sewage, came up out what of What do you mean, like sewage? Now, what we need to get the details. It, 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 is, it is sewage. Uh, it came up out of the ground and it rested, it rested on the, on the floor of, of the well. And, and the air that I was breathing in was coming in directly from, uh, from the well. So that I, had, I had two windows. Yeah. And I was breathing it in for a couple of months, and it made me very ill. Okay, I'm going to come out of blackout here. We'll get the other lights on. And right, it, it okay. made me it made me very unwell. However, I, it, how, how did it make you feel unwell? I mean, obviously, if you're aches if, and pains, yeah. uh, dizzy, um, feeling sick, uh, I mean, this sleeping is, a lot. How long did this go on for? A couple of months. A couple of months. You yeah. were exposed to this sewage. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that sewage is generally not meant to be something you're meant to be exposed to, Tony. It's sort of kind to make you sick. It can kill you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't die. I, I, I survived. Um, so did you go, go through any treatment for this or what? Yeah. I mean, I was very unwell. You know, I, I, even to this day, I sometimes I, I have, uh, uh, I, you know, I was unwell for a, a long time as, as a result of this. I was still working and functioning quite normally, but I, I had... Uh, aches and pains and bouts of dizziness and tired, very, very, very bad tiredness, you know. It had a long-term effect on me. But one of the, one of the effects was my skin changed uh, its response to, to light. So in sunlight, it's like reflects the light. Uh, and then in this normal light, it it's doesn't. Now, why did you respond to the black goo? Because that, that's where the, the black goo is. It's under the ground and it's part of the sewage. Now the, the the point about the black goo is you, you're from you seem to be familiar with the term black goo. Yeah, I am. And uh, what does black goo mean to you? It's a conscious um, fluid. It's a fluid which is sentient, and it can modify your your DNA. And this is in the sewage system. It's of in London. the sewage system. Yeah. 
um, clean And leaves. if you get exposed to it for, for too long, uh, it adjusts your, your, it modifies your DNA. And, and one of the effects that it had on me was my skin. Is it, you know, I, I look like a snowman uh, in, in sunlight. <laughs> and, it, you know, so, so I don't know what else it's done to me. Uh, it, it could have affected my... But the military seems to be aware of it and they, they put you in a hole. They are aware of it, yeah. And what are they aware of? What's the whole thing? Of? What's the bees and ease on this? I think it's, it's some sort of uh, experiment with genetics, uh, modification of genetics. Of, 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 uh, rather than genetic engineering with a baby, it's like someone who's already been alive for a, a number of years and modifying uh, someone's DNA now. Like for instance, you, um, you've got your your DNA and it's 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 set for you. But it could be mod, you know, in this type of uh, environment, it could be modified, you know, in this lifetime rather than having to breed it, rather than having to breed the modifications. Let's just run that again. You're, I think you're scouting around the issue here. Sure. You're familiar with the black goo. Yep. You were placed. In you coincidentally were yeah. in a room which is below ground. But these things aren't coincidences. We, well, I know that. You yeah. just said that. So you've been deliberately exposed. Let, let's post you've been deliberately exposed to this black goo, which yeah. is in the London sewage system. Yeah. Which is um, modifying human DNA. Correct. Yeah, I'm a victim of, of that. And it's conscious. Now, what, what do you mean it's conscious? It's, it's sentient. And how do you know that? Uh, that is what it's what is a, is alleged alleged, you know. So uh, somebody told you it was sentient. I've been told a number of times. By whom? Uh, a, a friend of mine who uh, has gone and stayed in facilities, uh, you know, military facilities, um, informed me that there is this. Uh, a friend of yours who stayed in military. Yeah, he he's been in uh, military facilities doing trainings and stuff. Uh, I mean, can you? I mean, everybody abroad. They do they do strange trainings, consciousness trainings, where you end up hallucinating and seeing, uh, high, you know, higher beings, and they put you they put you in a room, a white room, a room with just white walls, um, and and you're just in there all day staring at these white walls that are a specific uh, shade of white, which is really garish, and eventually it starts to cause you to to hallucinate. That's a little bit different to the um, bathtub thing where people are blacked out. Yeah. Same the, principle? Yeah, same principle. In, uh, instead of, in other words, it's, it's a monotone signal to your, ner to your optical system. It slightly drives you mad, yeah. Pure white everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you start hallucinating. Uh, and you're not allowed to talk. If you, if you talk, it slows down the process, so you have to have complete silence. And you, you just eat and you don't say anything and you stay for about a month. That's interesting. That seems to remind me of 2001, A Space Odyssey, the final scenes where he's in a white room. Yeah. Eating. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. It's sim it, it, I know the scene that you mean. It's similar to that. Uh, is there any other furniture in a room like that? Or is, I mean, you've got to sit down. No, there's, 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 a, there's a toilet outside, um, uh, but the actual room is just white. And you, you go out and you, to eat, but you spend most of your time in a room that's just... So when you go out to eat, uh, is it... Uh, you're, is you're, it? you're trained not to say anything. So you sit at a table with people who are, oh, also, right. who are also undergoing the process. Right. And none of you are allowed to say anything. And that, that increases the, the, the effectiveness of the, of the technique. To, to be sitting at a table after being in a room that's completely white and not saying anything increases the the effectiveness of the training. Is that because you become more aware of the other people's sensitivities? You start to being... become telepathic. Yes. Yeah. And um, how many other people were there, there when you were, were in this room? Or was, was he in the room? Or you, or you I wasn't there? there. I've been informed of uh, what, what goes on by, by him. Is there a program name that we can associate with that? Uh, not that I'm aware. Um, so... Where does this happen? Are you able to say where this facility is? It's Switzerland. Oh, this is in Switzerland. It's yeah. not even this country. It's not in England. Um, so you're flown over there. This guy was you're, flown you're, over. It's there. part of the deal. Yeah, you, you, your flights and everything. And must, this must be an international thing then. It, I believe it's done in a number of different countries. But they need to have the facility. They need to have the rooms and 
you know the, what's the difference the between a, a white room and a, and a, well, it's and a, a, it's a specific shade of white so it's like very bright and I, i'm quite sure it's it's chose it's a specific uh shade that that, that they've researched you know neurologically because they're scientists what kind of uh light are you exposed to in these this room it's not too bright it's just right you know it's and like, is it sunlight balanced or is it uh tungsten is there ultraviolet in there infrared are, are there any different differences it's, it's, in the light it's, itself uh it's 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 i believe it's like normal uh not light bulbs you know the the halid uh, fluorescent fluorescent lights yeah yeah um they have a habit of pulsing it doesn't yeah i don't i mean it might be maybe the pulse uh helps you know it's because it's a frequency isn't it yeah they affect your consciousness so i think that's on purpose probably uh yeah. I don't have every single detail on this. Right. I just know white rooms, not allowed to say anything, loads of hallucinations, expand. And what do they eat? Quite healthy food, you know, like health food. Uh, in other words, they weren't fed a particular diet which would stimulate one particular thing. They're, they're fed very good food, like fruit, fruit and veg. Okay. Um, so they kept it sort of as, as, as at a particular alkalinity or, or yeah, or, it's all healthy and specific. Yeah. Uh, Are they given alkaline. any pills, any other no, drugs, no any pills. injections? Not that they know of. You know, they're eating and drinking on the facility, but officially there isn't any. Uh, any strange tastes? Not that. Not he didn't report any. Yeah. Okay. Now he. How did you, how did he did he volunteer this information to you? How how did he get right? The thing to is, it took a while for us to to be open with each other because we've known each other for seven years um, but we used to have like a weird clash like a personality clash um, however recently in the last year we started meeting up every week and talking on Skype and we you know in the beginning we, we just kept the subjects very uh, bland and no normal but over time we, we became more honest with each other um, and you know he he knows that I've had some some of these strange experiences, uh, and he started to share with me his his ones. You know, and one of them is that he's been away uh, a number of times for one month each time and lived in a facility with the white rooms and everything. And he's the one that uh, told me um, about the black goo. And eventually, I shared with him that I had a sewage uh, you know environmental exposure. Uh, now, 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 what did he say about the black goo? Oh, he says it's sentient and it has a technology in it which modifies your DNA. Uh, it's, a con it's a conscious uh, or organism, like a fluid. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a conscious uh, liquid. And where did they find it? Oh, anything about where they find it? Uh, apparently, it's, been, it's an experimental science. It's been, it's been made uh, by scientists. And it's been flushed into the sewage system. So basically, they flushed it down the toilet. Yeah. And it hasn't gone away. It hasn't gone away. No. Are there any other things down there, like giant spiders? Yeah. Yeah. C could you describe anything like that? In they're, other words, any other life forms? There are not spiders like giant, like human size, but there are very strange insects down there you know th there's all sorts of life forms you know small life forms down there uh now when you say down there you're talking about a typical london sewer yeah there's it's 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 uh, crawling with uh life forms as well as that black goo stuff which is interacting with the life forms because you know there's a, there's interaction between the the goo and all the viruses and the bacterias and the toxins and the it's slightly radioactive um you know, there's a lot of interac interaction going down, going on down there. Now, explain that. What do you mean by interaction? Well, the the sentient uh, goo or fluid um, is is able. It has a similar. Basically, some of the viruses uh, do similar things to the goo, so they modify your DNA, um, and the the goo is able to replicate. The technology of the natural organisms like the viruses and the the bacterias so it it can you know it can uh work with the viruses so if the viruses if you if you breathe in uh the viruses airborne they 
can copy themselves into your DNA and slightly mo modify your DNA and the the goo can piggyback off, off, off the back of that and then further the process. So the goo is essentially modifying other creatures to go to other places and then copy back to itself. Yeah. It can do it as well itself, but it needs uh, to, to, to ride on the back of uh, a substance, if that makes sense. Well, it helps. It helps, yeah. The goo basically staying where the sewer is, but the other things can crawl around and do other things. With, with a bit of the goo in them. Yes. Hmm. Now, logically, this must mean that it, it must be in the humans then. Not everyone. It depends. Yeah. If you need to have been exposed to it, yeah. So, so you know, for me, for instance, I've been exposed to it, and I've I've uh, theoretically been modified by it. I've got you know I've got evidence such as the the skin and uh, my mind works a bit differently. I learnt a language around that time, and it, I learnt it quite quickly. In about what kind of months. language? Portuguese. All right. So it uh, wasn't a. Maybe. You were able to learn the language better or quicker? Yeah, and I wasn't able to, to learn another language after. So during, during the exposure is when I picked up the CDs, the Portuguese CDs, and started studying them. And I had an urge to study a language around that time, and it just came out of nowhere. And I learned the language. And, um, but since that, you can't learn any more language? I, I, I can, but it, it doesn't happen really quickly. Like In other did. words, has it gone back to your normal it's learning normal, rate? It's normal, yeah. It wasn't normal. At the, at the time, I was able to, to learn Portuguese. Whilst, whilst exposed and breathing in the air, I was listening to the CDs and learning the language really quickly. But then after, once it had all gone, my learning level of, of language went, went back down to normal. So... Um, uh, uh, so this is your person, personal experience with the black goo. Yeah. So you saw ordinary sewage coming at r ranks, stinking sewage. Yeah. Um, Very dark sewage. And because it had the black goo in it. Probably. Right. What do you mean by probably? Well, it, it wasn't. There's you know there's different uh, types of sewage. Depends on how on yeah, well. how you know where where it is in the 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 ground, uh, where it's come from, what it's filtered through. But it, it it was it was sewage, you know, it was dark uh, sewage. So it was but real what, sewage. It wasn't. What like, kind of floor was this? Were there holes in it? I mean, was it was it? The the floor had a bit of of uh, moss on it. Right. Uh, and it was. Uh, well, moss like needs stone. daylight. It, yeah, there is daylight. There's a there's a a big open open part at the top. Right. Uh, and the floor is like stone. Stone. Sandstone? Stone and um, concrete. Right, with cracks and things. Yeah, in it. yeah. So, in other words, it, uh, if something underneath must have really got, got really high well, level. No, there was a plate, uh, like a. A manhole? It, it, something like a manhole. Um, it was square rather than, rather than round. Right. And it, it came up out of the. Out of, it broke and the sewage came out. That's uh, and, and rested on top of the, the, the ground. I mean, that takes a lot of pressure. There was a lot of pressure. Yeah. Was that during raining or floods? Or? Yeah, there was a flood. That's what it caused. And uh, then you were exposed to the st st stinking air. Yeah. And what did the army guy do about this? He didn't do anything. We kept calling him up uh, on the phone, and he just said, "Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to deal with it." So, how many other people were infected by this? Only I was because the flat was very large and the other sections of, of the flat were connected to different outside parts. So you, 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 the other people in the flat didn't. were not infected. Uh, so you're sick, right? And mm. you've got the black goo. Yeah. Or brown goo? or uh, it, it was uh, slightly green. It was like greeny brown, dark. Uh, yeah. And it stank of uh, a mixture of different. It, it was such a complicated smell that you 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 know it didn't smell of uh, you know poo or anything. It it, it smelled yeah. of something very complicated. It, it had a very complicated smell, you know. That's a mixture of God, you know, so many different things that you know you can't pinpoint what you can't say. I mean, this is a major health hazard. Could you not have reported this to the council? Had no, we did. We we, we yeah, well, it was a major health hazard, and you know I, I suffered a lot. Um, but it got it got repaired after a couple of months. Um, 
and they dug up the hole and just put concrete down on it or whatever. I'm not sure what they did to fix it or what I didn't observe. I mean, they repair the manhole. They completely, yeah, they repaired everything, yeah. Um, now, wh what evidence have, do you know of all these other different creatures or whatever that you're talking about? Um, because, well, I, I just, I, I, it's a strange, I have a, a connection with, with the substance because of what it did to me. So I, I just, I, I know that there are uh, viruses which, you know, are, are able to, to copy themselves into your DNA. Uh, I mean, is it that that's just a standard biological thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, what's what's the startling thing about the the, the, the black goo? Uh... Well, because the black goo is is if it's conscious, it it can control that process. So there's a process there that can be used to do genetic engineering on a on a living organism, and it off the back on the piggybacking on 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 the viruses and all of that sort of thing. The black goo can modify people. Who explained this to you? Uh, my, my, to be honest, uh, I kind of knew this intuitively. However, I had it explained to me by the one, the man that does the, uh, the goes away to the, the place with the white room. Yes. He explained it to me. How, however, I kind of knew it, you know. After the exposure. Yeah. And so, what is your message uh, where, on this particular section? Um, what is your message about this black goo? Well, we've got to remember that uh, other the black goo, the message about the black goo, I think it modifies people, and, it, and I'm not sure whether it chooses people for like for a specific reason or if it's whoever happens to get exposed to it. Um, but I think it slightly modifies their intellect. You know, it makes them possibly more adaptive uh, with a type of thinking that's quite. Uh, more articulated, so like giving names to things, uh, conceptualizing things in a very uh, complicated way. Um, what do you mean by complicated? Well, if it, if it's modi if it you, if it's if it's modified your thinking, um, it, it could make your thinking more vivid and structured with like patterns to it, like very very ordered patterns to it, rather than just everyday normal thinking. So you could look at something and sort of tear it apart. You know, into its component parts, and and art, and you know, you you articulate your thinking. I, I get this from when I was learning the language, whilst breathing it in. Yeah. Um, the language was was appearing to me in my mind, like it, as as components, component parts of words, and the words rule appearing for for me in my visual visualizations uh, field of my mind, uh, and they're all articulated like a, like a like a framework, like a puzzle, like a mosaic. You know, so, so it was giving you an, an ability to think in much higher graphical terms. Yeah, exactly. Visualization with, with patterns and you know seeing patterns in things. So you could actually identify patterns within very complicated. Yeah. Uh, designs of things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, so, even today, uh, you know, things there is there are certain things which happen. Like for instance, I I notice a lot of more. Uh, I mean, it's difficult because it's subjective, so you don't know exactly how much people notice. But if if there are people walking on on one side of the road and people walking on the other side of the road, I'll be aware sometimes of small movements. Like if one of them moves their finger, and the other one moves their their elbow or something like that, I'll see both at the same time. But I, I'm able, you know, sometimes I'm able to see things that are far apart, very small things simultaneously, as if I'm looking directly at each one. It's it's like a split consciousness. Now, very briefly, uh, one of the things I've been exposed to, well, we're really running out of tape okay. uh, on this because we, um, I'm interested in a thing called scuttlers and spider-type creatures, crab-type spider things. Okay. Are you familiar with anything? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that on tape three. Okay. And uh, thank you very much so far. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>